Welcome to our Sunday worship, something slightly different this week as we begin Lent, something to help us to think and to pray. reading from the Psalms. Psalm 91. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High and abides under the shadow of the Almighty shall say to the Lord, my refuge and my stronghold, my God in whom I put my trust. For he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He shall cover you with his wings and you shall be safe under his feathers. His faithfulness shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of any terror by night nor of the arrow that flies by day. Of the pestilence that stalks in darkness nor of the sickness that destroys at noonday. Though a thousand fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, yet it shall not come near you. 
your eyes have only to behold to see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your stronghold. There shall no evil happen to you, neither shall any plague come near your tent, for he shall give his angels charge over you and keep you in all your ways. Lent is a strange season to love, but I do love it, starting with Ash Wednesday. There's a comfort in being able to be honest that I screw up and that I'm going to die. Much of the time we're encouraged to pretend that those things aren't true. This week, when humanity, sin and death are so apparent in the things we are seeing and reading and hearing in our media. This day has arrived at an apt time, for it reminds us not just that there is sin and death, but also that these things will never have the final word. Love is victorious, and despite the mess that humans create and recreate, there will always be hope. 
and in these times I find my hope and I hold my faith in prayer, for we are called to ceaseless prayer. Prayer without ceasing may seem impossible, but as Wesley explains here in A Plain Account of Christian Perfection, it is bigger than bowing our heads or folding our hands, and I find that helpful and comforting in these unsettling days. He writes, All that a Christian does, even in eating and sleeping, is prayer, when it is done in simplicity according to the order of God without either adding to or diminishing from it by his or her own choice. Prayer continues in the desire of the heart through the understanding be employed on outward things. In souls filled with love, the desire to please God is a continual prayer. I am sure that, like many of you, I have such heaviness in my heart at this time as I think on all that is going on. And together we pray, please God, deliver us from tyrants and heal the tyranny within ourselves. A poem by Anne Weems, I think, speaks into this. On the edge of war, one foot already in. I no longer pray for peace, I pray for miracles. I pray that stone hearts will turn to tender-heartedness, and evil intentions will turn to mercifulness, and all the soldiers already deployed will be snatched out of harm's way, and the whole world will be astounded onto its knees. I pray that all the God talk will take bones and stand up and shed its cloak of faithlessness and walk again in its powerful truth. I pray the whole world might sit down together and share its bread and its wine. Some say there is no hope, but then I've always applauded the holy fools who never seem to give up on the scandalousness of our faith, that we are loved by God, that we can truly love one another. I no longer pray for peace, I pray for miracles. I pray for miracles and search for them in this season of our life together as humanity, as people across the world, for all those who seek refuge, for all those who weep for the loss of loved ones and life as it was known. For those for whom hopes and futures are shattered by the experiences of today. But in this season of Lent where we think about what it is to be God's people, we hear the words of God in the life of Christ, in the power of the Spirit who comes to us and says to us, there is yet more to come. And as we hear the words of Ash Wednesday, that from dust we come and to dust we shall return, we may also hold the hope before us that out of that dust, that earth, that soil, new life will come new life as we live our life in the one from whom all life is sourced. May this Lenten season be one for us in which we know hope, even in the messiness of life, and where we pray ceaselessly for hope, that we may be life and light and hope to those for whom it is lacking. May the Lord bless and keep us now, and always we pray. Amen.
Thank you for joining us as we shared in this short act of worship. May God bless you and be with you and all those whom you love and care for. May the peace of God rest upon you and upon this earth. And may you know God's love and life in all you do and all you are in the coming weeks. Bye for now. Take care. God bless.